how you do econ students. This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now, we're gonna talk about taxes. The government takes efficiency breaks deep in the heart of taxes. Now you've learned about supply and demand and consumer surplus and producer surplus. It's time to put all those things together and talk about taxes. A per unit tax or an excise tax is a tax on producers. So right here, let's have the supply and demand for some random product. Let's say milk. Paul, why are we doing milk? No more milk. So we've got the supply and demand for milk and let's say the equilibrium is right here at $3. If the government put a per unit excise tax on milk of $2 per unit, that would cause a supply curve to shift to the left that would cause supply to shift to the left. But there's some more details that you actually have to watch out for. As you can see, the price that consumers pay is now $4. But I want you to notice the price didn't go up to five, right? It was a $2 tax and the price before was three, but the new price isn't five. That's because the consumers and the producers pay a portion of this tax. The price that consumers pay is now right here, $4. But the producers don't get that $4. Remember, they have to pay a $2 tax. So they don't get $4, they get only $2. The way you can spot this is by looking at the vertical distance between these two supply curves. That tells you the per unit amount of the tax. So that vertical distance is $2, and so the producers only get to keep $2 of the $4 consumers pay. Where does the other $2 go? Well, to the government. That $2 tax times a new quantity of 80 represents the $160 of tax revenue that goes to the government. And the reason why there's this tax wedge is because now there's three people involved with this transaction. Before the tax, it was just consumers and producers, but now it's consumers, producers, and the government. So the total expenditures or spending on milk is $4 times 80. That big box is spent total on milk. And this right here, the $160, two times 80 is how much the government gets to keep. And the other $160 right there is how much the producers get to keep of the money consumers spent. Now let's ask a new question. What happened to consumer surplus when there was a shift in the supply and the price went up? Remember, consumer surplus is the difference between what people are willing to pay for something what they actually did pay. So it's this triangle right here before the tax. After the tax, it's this triangle right here, right? When the price goes up, it screws over consumers. Producer surplus also got smaller, right? When the supply shifted to the left and the price that producers got was only two, that producer surplus is right there. So the consumer surplus is there, producer surplus is there, and that right there is the government tax revenue. So what about this old triangle of consumer and producer surplus that used to exist? Well, that's called dead weight loss. If the government taxes something like milk and the quantity the society actually wants, the socially optimal quantity is 100, and they tax it, it's going to decrease efficiency. It's going to cause a decrease in total surplus. So taxes on some products will lead to inefficiency. Let's try it again, except this time I've changed the slope of the demand curve. I've made it more inelastic. As you can see, the original price was 12 and the original quantity is 12. Then the government came in and put a tax causing the supply curve to shift to the left. Now I want you to answer these questions. Pause the video and I'll go over them. The first question is the tax per unit. To figure it out, it's the vertical distance between the supply curves. So this is a $3 tax. Don't assume it's a $2 tax because that's what happened to price, right? Price went up $2. Remember, consumers and producers share this tax. The tax revenue is $30. It's a $3 tax per unit times the 10 quantity, which is that box right there. The total amount of tax revenue paid by consumers is $20. This is the $2 more that consumers pay per unit times the 10 unit output. Since the total tax revenue is $30, then the tax that the producers must be paying must be 10 bucks. The producers used to get 12, now they only get 11, and so they get $1 less than before. One times 10 is the $10 of total tax revenue the producers pay. Notice that the consumers and the producers do not share this tax equally. It's because the demand curve is relatively inelastic compared to the supply curve. Total expenditures or spending after the tax is the $14 times 10 or $140. The total revenue to firms is how much firms get to keep. Well, they don't get to keep $14 per unit. Remember, they only get to keep $11 because the $3 per unit goes to the government. So $11 times 10 gives you $110 revenue that goes to firms. Bonus round! It's really easy to get confused by this idea of producers and consumers sharing a tax. You would think that if there's a tax, then consumers just pay all of it. But as you can see from the graph, that's not the case. To help you understand this concept, I'm gonna show you some graphs. So let me get out of the way and I'll show you what's going on. Right now, you're looking at the demand curve with different elasticities. You've got perfectly inelastic, relatively inelastic, unit elastic, relatively elastic and perfectly elastic. Now what I'm gonna do is put a supply curve on each one of these demand curves that is unit elastic. And I'm gonna put the same per unit tax 
on every single one of these demand curves. The boxes right here are the total tax revenue that goes to the government, and it shows you who's paying the tax. When the demand is perfectly inelastic, then the consumers pay all of the tax. Producers pay none of it. When the demand is relatively inelastic, the consumers pay the majority of the tax, just like the question we saw earlier. When the demand and the supply have the same elasticity, then consumers and producers share the tax equally. When the demand is more elastic than the supply, then producers are gonna pay more of the tax. And when the demand is horizontal or perfectly elastic, the producers are gonna pay all of that tax. The best way to remember all this stuff is just draw the graph. Show the different ideas of elastic and inelastic and draw that tax revenue box. Then you can look at it and it tells you who pays the majority of the tax. Dang, Mr. Clifford, this is awesome. Hey, I hope this video helped you understand taxes. Take a look at the next video that's gonna talk about consumer choice and utility maximization. Also take a look at my review apps for the AP exam, all right? Till next time.